Welcome back, everybody, to Reed Arena. Charlie Chitwood here courtside now, joined by head coach Jarrett Von Rosenberg. Uh, coach, what do you think? First thing out of the box. Yeah, um, you know, got to give them a lot of credit. Good basketball team. Uh, Buzz does a great job. They kept us off uh, off balance. Sorry, I didn't have my microphone going there. Um, kept us off balance. They did a really good job. They're a really good basketball team. Um, you know, I thought I just it was a little disappointing from our returners. Um, they didn't do enough. They weren't consistent enough in doing the things how we want to do things on both sides of the ball. And then, you know, obviously new guys, there's going to be some growing pains there. But when you play a really good team and you make mistakes and you compound mistakes, you have no chance. Um, you have no chance to get stops. Um, and then, obviously, the one thing I, I did think we did a really nice job of is taking care of the basketball. Um, if you take away a couple possessions, but in the first half, turn it over three times on the road like that um, is really good. Indeed, Coach, uh, and defensively ended up doing pretty good. <laughs> Blocked five shots, two more than the Aggies did down low, but uh, rebounding, oh, they were tough on the boards. Yeah, they're, I mean, they were one of the best rebound teams in the country. Um, we knew that was going to be a struggle, and uh, we shot the ball really poorly, but, um, you know, you, you've, you've, we've talked enough times. Uh, that is not – has nothing to do with the message in theirs. We've got to be more consistent in how we guard actions and what we're trying to get done. Um, you've got enough challenges going on the road to play an SEC team to deal with. You can't hurt yourself and not give yourself a chance on some of those possessions. So, um, you know, it'll be great film for us. Um, I, I, the, the message is that the guys shouldn't feel good. They did not put a good performance together on both sides of the ball, and obviously the, um, the, the, the total uh, dictates that and the, the outcome. Um, but so don't feel good tonight. But they got to get ready to you know look in the mirror and handle coaching and and you know uh, like I said we're going to find out a lot about our team. We have an o opportunity to really grow uh, throughout this week. Coach, the both teams took 28 three pointers tonight. Aggies uh, 11 of 28. Lions only four. Were they getting good looks? How did it look from your side of the floor on those? Were you happy with the shot selection? A lot, a lot of them. Um, you know, it, and it, it's a little bit, you know, when you're not playing well offensively, you don't have a great rhythm to you. Some of those shots are just a little off rhythm. We like the shots, but maybe it's not quite in the flow like we want, and that, that makes it hard to, to make those shots sometimes. All right, you had uh, a number of guys on point today, a couple of newcomers as well. How would you feel about the way your guards handle that press in the backcourt? We did a nice job of getting the, like, never having it to be an issue we just didn't do a good job of getting into our stuff once we got the ball across half court but you know that's why you do a tempo press and um they're good at it so they they caused us to to have some hurried possessions or we weren't in the right spots all the time um and that's part of that rhythm and you know first game it's a you know they didn't let us come down one time and just get into offense um and that's why they do it um we did a lot of that too which was i thought was good for us uh at, at times and um, the ones that, you know, you guard well for 20 seconds and they, you know, give a bunch of offensive rebounds, those are the ones that are kind of killers for you. Um, and it ended up being, I don't know how many second chance points they had, but I figured it was uh, They had six. They only had six. So, well. well, it was four more than us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coach. Hey, you know, you talked yesterday in the walkthrough and uh, the film about not wanting Wade Taylor to be the one that beat your team tonight. Uh, did you say anything about Hayden Hefner, though? Ended up leading score with 19 points, and Hefner was just hitting them seemingly from anywhere. Yeah, I'm, i got to go back and look at the film when we talked about all the guys. Uh, yeah, they're good players. Uh, multiple guys could beat you. Uh, you know, Wade Taylor didn't have to really do much, if you will, uh, the way the, the game got going, but he really distributed the ball and got, got guys the ball and, and spots to be successful. Coach, how did you feel about the way your guys manned up against a bigger team like that? Uh, when Wilden's Levesque was out there, that's a big truck. Yeah, you know, I thought we got to the foul line pretty good, so we had some good, you know, physicality inside. Um, we, we lost a lot of the rebound, the tip-out ones, and, and we gave up offensive rebounds, obviously. Uh, but we missed so many shots that – it's hard that they're going to have so many defensive rebounds. Uh, you know, I wish we would have cut that number on offensive rebounds, even against like A&M to like 10. Um, uh, you know, and, you know, I thought we guarded initial shot pretty pretty well in the first, uh, in the second half better. I mean, they only shot, ended up shooting 43%. Um, part of that's dictated by the score, but, you know, we blocked some shots and we protect the rim a little bit. Um, so, 
you know, there, there's going to be some good to pull away from it. Um, just too many times we made too many mistakes on possessions that just really make it hard on you. All right, let's get some of the individual performances and start out with Jerome Brewer. He was the high point man, 13 points, five rebounds, both high numbers for the team, and he added a block shot in there. Uh, Brewer started to he, – he, he makes three-pointers. We've seen him do that. He got better at it last year, but I don't think he ever took six in a single game. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, he, he's, he's had some games where he shot him well. Um, again, he his were just a little out of flow sometimes. Um, but for the most part, I thought his, you know, except for the one he dribbled into, I believe, um, I, I thought all of his shots were good. And, um, you know, we'll take that. Obviously, he was four for uh, – or he was three for four from inside of three. Um, so, shoot a very high percentage from two. Um, and that, that's our recipe. Obviously, we don't want to go four for 28. That's not going to win you anything. But, um, you know, you just have a little bit better on point. You know, VJ is probably the best shooter uh, on our team if you just go in a shooting competition. Tommy shot 50% from three last year. He goes 0 for four. Um, so just, just not clicking offensively quite. Uh, but it's one game. I'm, I'm not worried about those guys uh, when it comes to shooting basketball. All right. So, what do you what, what what was the message to him when you went in the locker room first? I just said it's not not acceptable. It's not okay just because they're a really good team and you're on the road. Um, you know, our older guys got to be more consistent with how we do things and can't get caught up in the fact that it's a game. We got to execute on both sides of the ball like we've been working on since June. Um, and then you know uh, we got to take the bright spots and and not get tired of doing the things that work. You know, if something works, I don't know why it, we. we went away from it decided to try something different uh, why if, if we find something that work let's just k- keep doing the same thing keep getting the same results on both sides of the ball and um, we're working towards that and it's a long year it's gonna be a long week and we're just we'll, we'll get back at it as soon as i get back to the hotel we'll watch it and own it and get ready for the next one all right uh one last thing uh, what about big eyes out of some of your freshmen and then the newcomers were were they they've been practicing so much with D1 athletes now, and it, it helps make it a little bit. It's not like you're coming in with a Division Two team that only gets to play D1 guys maybe once or twice a year. Now it's every week. Yeah, no, absolutely every game. I mean, um, what I what I feel good about there's not a talent problem on our team. Um, as far as I'm, I'm I'm not saying we're necessarily talented ain't in, but like we don't have a talent problem. Right. Uh, you step on the floor and, and you know physically we can you know compete and battle. We just got it. You know, that's a veteran team that returns a lot of guys, and they were a lot more disciplined than even our returners. And that's where, you know, we got to be better and we got to just handle the moment better, and, and that's what we'll work on. All right, Coach. Well, I know you're going to be working on it pretty quick. I think that bus pulls out at 5.15 tomorrow morning, so we're going to all get ready. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Our very best congratulations to you for game one being out of the box. Now we'll move on and see what the Red Raiders of Lubbock up at Texas Tech have in mind. You got it. Go Lions. All right, that's Jarrett Von Rosenberg, head coach your A&M Commerce Lions. Go ahead. You guys have a pretty tough schedule to start with. Do you think that um, like starting out with such tough opponents will help you guys down the road? Uh, yeah, we hope so. Um, you know, you get in an environment like this and uh, you know, we expect Tech is going to be their opener, so we expect that to be crazy and then we go to this uh, – we play a team called Kentucky um, <laughs> on Friday, um, and they're, they're playing football. They're playing Alabama football the next day. So, yeah, we, we feel like we're going to be in some hostile environments, um, and hopefully we'll be able to draw some some stuff from that later in the game. Um, great opportunity for some of our players uh, to see – to do some things really well and have success on both sides of the ball. And then when they kind of deviate and, and, and maybe try to do too much uh, – you get overwhelmed a little bit by a team like AM. So um, we'll have to learn from it, look in the mirror, and just uh, go to work tomorrow. I know there's the uh, GoFundMe for uh, your family spreading around. What has this last month been like for you? And um, if you get a chance to kind of share the, the message of that for people out there, too. Yeah. Uh, Y'all might ask me about that. Yeah, a lot going on at home. Uh, but my wife's doing better. That's why I'm here. Um, so 
the the basketball community buzz uh, has been incredible. Um, so, uh, we're in a tough business, but it's pretty cool to see um, how people help out. So, I appreciate people sharing our story and, you know, hopefully we can pay it forward at some point. Could you share with us how she's doing right now? She's doing better. She's medically stable and she's... uh. She's in inpatient rehab in a hospital right now, um, but she's able to talk and communicate, and you know she she might be watching. Um, so I love you. She's doing better. Has coaching during this time been a help, a distraction, or has it been something that you just had to get through? Uh. I don't know. I still get mad at our guys. I still uh, <laughs> want to see our guys do well. Um, I think it's a good lesson for them. Like, like sometimes you got stuff in your life, but you gotta. Once everything's okay at home, you gotta go. You know, take care of your family, take care of your job. So hopefully, it's a good life lesson. What would you see from A uh, and team today, and and the kind of uh, outlook that they might have moving forward? Oh, they're good. Uh, really good. Um, you know what? I, I think they do a really good job defensively. Uh, you know, and they 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 al didn't allow us one time to come down and just get into our stuff, um, which made it hard on us, especially early in the season of um, just kind of flowing into offense that that three quarter court, uh, you know, switching man stuff that they do. Uh, it just really puts you on your heels, and we weren't able. And when we were able to get stops and turnovers, we were able to play pretty well because we could play in transition, but. Um, we had to walk the ball up the floor and handle that pressure. It really slowed down what we're trying to do. They're a good basketball team. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank you.